Oh, hey everybody, it's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, making a video for you out of Boise, Idaho. Today, we are going to learn the basics on removing things like your brake, your brake caliper, your, uh, your rotor, your wheel hub, your struts, your tie rods. Ultimately, what I'm doing on this job is I am changing the passenger side CV axle. And so all these components have to come off or come loose in order to get that CV axle out of there. So we'll just go ahead and we'll get started with our brakes here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to get my brake caliper off. And I believe we're going to have a 13 millimeter wrench that we're going to need to get there. Now you got to forgive me, I'm sicker than a dog. My babies have been sick. I think it's it's a flu bug. It seems to be about a three-day ordeal. It is not fun. I'm moving it really slow, but regardless of how sick I am, I still got four babies and a wife to feed, and people need their cars, so I'm doing the simple stuff that I have sitting around the shop. And right now, I'm looking for a 13 millimeter socket, so I can go ahead and get those brake pads removed. Alright. So you got 13 millimeter socket. Oh no, that's not a 13. Or is it just dirty? No. You know what's funny? I I was gonna grab a 14 anyways, just in case. All right. Okay, let's see if we get you back in here. Cut one loose. too loose all right and while I'm in here I'm gonna go ahead and change out the brake pads and mic the rotors and stuff as well all right Let's set that down right there on the tire Okay, we're good there. I mean, honestly, she has about 50% of a pad left. So ultimately, she doesn't necessarily need brake pads right this second. But since I'm in here and it's cheap enough, I'm going to put a new set of brake pads on here. I'll get her some with a lifetime warranty. All right, now the next thing, once you've got your brake caliper off and set aside safely, just to get your bracket off here. It's your bracket that holds your pads. Let's see what we got. Looking for a 17 millimeter. You know what? I wonder. I wonder. So, okay, so sometimes to get this bracket off that holds your brake pads on, it can be in there extremely tough, torqued down, or sometimes it can be just simple like that. Ruby! There's the Ruby dog. Hey, Ruby! Stay close. Come here. Good dog. That's a good puppy. All right. So, if they are, I mean, I've been known to get in here with an air gun before and need to take them out. 
so if they are don't don't get too upset you may take some some elbow grease to get them you may need an air gun to get them out All right, so now that you've got your brake, your bracket off there, you're gonna wanna get your rotor out of the way. And you've got a couple of screws here that hold this rotor on. Now, not every application is like this. Uh, Nissans are like this, Hyundais are like this, some Toyotas are like this, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they don't come with new screws to put back in there, so it's just the way they come. I have a special tool for that. Uh. Uh, let's see, it should be right in here. Dun, dun, dun. That's not it. This is it. Alright, special tool. Here we go. That should be the right bit. So. Uh, sorry about the camera work today guys all right there you go I'm just gonna smack this and that's gonna put the torque on it you need to turn it because they're they're knocked in there pretty good and you're gonna do the same thing the opposite direction to torque them in That rotor's not in too bad shape, and I really think we're going to be able to get away with just having to turn it. So now that leaves us with just our wheel hub attached here. So we have a few things that we want to get off of our wheel hub, like our ABS brake sensor and stuff like that. So, And I'm just going to let you know right now, if you're ever replacing an axle, these ABS sensors, they're not hard to disturb and they're not hard to break. You can uh, you can hit a bump uh, bump in the road too hard, and you can damage an ABS sensor. So if uh, if you do a job like this and you find that you have an ABS light on, more than likely it's because you should go ahead and replace the sensor. Now I'm able to get sensors for about ten dollars. Uh, at O'Reilly's, so. Sensors aren't too expensive. All right, let's see if we can get in here. Get you a good camera angle. Yeah. I don't know if I told you lately, but I lost my 10 millimeter ratcheting wrench. I'm not too happy about it. I use a, I use that wrench quite a bit. All right, so pull your 10 millimeter bolt out. And just kind of twist a little bit. Ah. Let me get something to, a few little things to see if I can persuade to get that out of there.
Well, I tell you what, after this job, I'm going inside. I'm going to bed, guys. There we go. That ought to happen a lot quicker. All right, just pull that out like that. Set that aside somewhere safe. Okay, the next thing I'm going to want to do now is I am going to want to, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and see how hard it's going to get what's called a spindle nut off. Because you're not going to be able to pull this hub off without pulling this spindle nut off. And actually, if I have... Some JB well, uh, some JB weld, some PB blaster. I'm gonna go ahead and squirt some PB blaster on there now. Oh man! Every time I stand up, my head just pressurizes, boy. Whoo! All right. Yeah, I'll spray that with some PB blaster. Hopefully, that won't be so hard to get off. And in the meantime. We'll work on our tie rod in there. That's definitely going to be bigger. Oh, no, it's not. Oops. There we go. That was fairly easy. It wasn't too hard at all. The real question is, is how hard is it going to be to get that tie rod out of there? We shall see. Sometimes you can just tap it on the side here. Don't tap too hard, you might crack it. Also, don't do that too much either. Just do it once or twice. That's not going to be easy to get out of there, guys. Because you don't want to make this flange. You don't want to create a flange here where you won't get it out. So, let's go see what we have in the form of pickle forks. <sighs> Alright. I know I got a pickle fork in here somewhere right here. Bam. And honestly tie rod ends for this car are like five dollars there we go so you stick your pickle fork in between there make sure you don't damage anything this tie rod end honestly could probably used to be changed anyways so I'll probably end up picking one of those up too so now that our tie rod end is out we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get this main spindle bolt off. And I'm gonna do that with air. Uh, let's see. This is where we break the big guns out. This is my dog chasing birds. Ruby, come here. She's part Vesela hound. I think it's the bird dog in her that has her chasing birds. Birds. Ruby, come here. Lay down. All right. All right. 
right now we just need to get our strut disconnected I'm just gonna use the gun to get these two 17 millimeter bolts off of here. One. That can't be good. I wonder if we can get the bolt off. There we go. Two. Alright. Huh. No reason for that now. Shoot, if I just get it to turn, it's like seized up in there. Wow. Okay. Ruby, come here. Over here. Ah! Ah! <laughs> well, that was seized up in there. All right. Now, you're just following along here. There we go. 
All right, now we need to get up inside of here and get it separated. So now that we got the axle separated, you're good there. Okay, can you see where it's busted? Make sure you put everything in a safe spot. You don't want your brake line breaking. And the next step would be to get under here. Look in here. Okay. Let me see. Now, unless you see a carrier bearing or some type of bracket or something that bolts this all together, all you should ever really have to do get in back here with the pry bar. Of course, you probably want to have something ready to grab your fluid that falls. <laughs> oh, I'm sick, folks, so I hope you can forgive me. There we go, and get something for all that transmission fluid. Whew. Oh, the place is a mess. Huh. Here, let's take this old chunky blanket. Well, it's backyard mechanic, isn't it? Okay, there. I'll stop that from running down my driveway. Now that we're free and clear, here we go. And keep in mind. You're gonna to want to replace about a quarter of that transmission fluid. So there you go, folks. That is how you, the basics to removing an axle. So, I appreciate you guys putting up my six cell. If you have any questions, just let me know. Please like, subscribe, share the knowledge, comment, I'll get back to you. This is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician. I'm gonna get cleaned up and go to bed.